What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. So this story's called, My Mom and I Helped Bust a Scam. Okay, first of all, English is my first language, so any spelling or formatting errors are completely on me. Also, if any Reddit YouTubers want to use this, feel free. After all, you're the reason I got on Reddit in the first place. Minor backstory. I live at home, I'm on the spectrum, high functioning, but have little patience for most people. I also pay rent and help my mom around the house. And my mom has always been so important to me. The only reason I bring this up is because she plays a big part in this story. Here's the cast, there's me. Mom. Idiot. Awesome customer service guy. Sweetheart. The nicest customer service lady. So this was a few years ago, so I don't remember it word for word, but this story gets me every time I think about it. So I was looking for a PS4, mostly because I wanted to play the Spider-Man game that had just come out, but I had a few others I wanted. I found a great deal on a website for a popular store that's main color is blue. I found a bundle that came with a Japanese arcade fighting game. I thought score, good price and a free game. Didn't question it too much because I got my Xbox on the same website for a similar deal. I get a package from this store two days early and it seemed small. Odd, I thought as I opened it. But after I opened it, it wasn't a PS4, but a copy of the game with a few knickknacks. Was not happy. But I check the tracking number and see it says my package is in Utah. Okay, they must have shipped the game and the PS4 separately. No problem, I can wait. Delivery day comes, I'm watching my tracking number like a hawk in case of porch pirates. Afternoon comes and the number says it was delivered to Denver. And I'm just like, what now? So I call their customer service line and after talking to a few people who were as confused as I was, tell me my order was through a third party partner and I would have to talk to their customer service department. All right, I think I'm finally getting somewhere. Enter idiot. This guy was a real piece of work. At one point, he tried to convince me I just paid $240 for a game and some knickknacks. No, I did not just buy a game for over 200 bucks. Well, that's what the ad says. That's not what it said when I ordered it. Yes, it did. Then how come the tracking number has been tracking my order even after the game got here? Hold on. Pause. I'm looking at the ad and it says, insert game here, special edition for the PS4. I'm not proud, but I blew up at the idiot and hung up. Mom from upstairs. You know, you're not gonna get anywhere yelling at the idiots of the world. I go upstairs to talk to her. I explain the whole situation. Little thing about my mom? Mess with her kids and she goes straight mama bear. Hold on, let me talk to them. She calls them, same thing with me. She talks to the staff until they put her through to the third party partner. I don't know if he recognized the number. We both called from the home phone or what, but he hung up before she could say a word. Now mad at the crap they pulled on me and hanging up on her, she calls back. Enter awesome customer service guy. Hello, store name here. This is awesome customer service guy. How can I help you? I just called you, you put me through to a third party partner and he hung up on me. What? She explains the situation. Hold on a second. Pause. Okay, I see what's going on. I'm looking at the ad and the original ad. They got your son's money as well as money from others and changed the ad. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. Oh, I understand. I used to work at store name here and I had to deal with stupid stuff. Over $200 for a game? Yeah, right! Okay, your son will have to talk to Billing, but we can get him a refund. She hands the phone to me. You need to talk to them. Hello? Store name. Sweetheart speaking, is this OP? Yes, it is. I understand you getting a refund because of some trouble with a third party partner. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I'm sorry to hear that. Not your fault, and you're already more helpful than they were. That's nice of you to say. Should I send the game back? 
I was under the impression you didn't get your order. I explained the situation one more time. <sighs> this happens more than you think. Keep the game, throw it away, it doesn't matter. I see you paid through PayPal. We have your PayPal in our system. We'll transfer the money through them, but give it a few days. I've waited this long for a PS4. What's a few more days? They got me my money back before I knew it. I'm not sure what happened after this, but I'm told the store went after Idiot's Company for the scam. And for those wondering, I got a PS4 Spider-Man bundle for the same price Idiot's Company tried to take me for. Yo, I got scammed in a very similar way. <laughs> okay, you're gonna think, what an idiot for falling for it. But I saw online, um... <laughs> This ad for a PS4 Pro, the Spider-Man Special Edition PS4 Pro pre-order for $269. And for those who don't know, that is an insanely good deal because that same thing costs probably 500 bucks total with shipping and uh, taxes and all that jazz. So I thought it was an amazing deal and I bought it right away and I paid through PayPal so I was safe, okay? What do you know, I got scammed, the customer support email was fake, the number didn't work, um, and yeah, I eventually got my money back though, so that's fine because PayPal, they saved me. But I also got a hundred bucks stolen from me through them, so that sucks also. This story's called, Then Why Even Bother Advertising It? So, in Australia, we have a big automotive parts chain, like AutoZone, but not AutoZone. Similar color scheme, though. They claim to have everything auto and much, much more. One of those more things is fitting of parts and accessories such as headlight globes, taillight globes, windscreen wipers, etc. Which, let's be honest, with cars these days, who can be bothered changing that stuff? It's generally a pain in the ass. So I've got a few stories from when I just couldn't be arsed, or it was easier to get them to do it. Story 1. Windscreen wipers on a Land Cruiser. So my Land Cruiser was a bit of a pain in the ass. Loved it, but a pain. Anyway, I just had knee surgery, so I couldn't change my wipers. My leg was in a brace, so there was no way I could lean over the bonnet at the angle required to reach my wipers, mainly the retaining bolts to remove the wiper arm. You see, for a car made in 1983, you don't buy refills, you just buy a whole new arm. Great design, Toyota. Stonkingly good. Anyway, off I toddle down to the shops, wife driving. I go in, use the computer, get the wipers, check they are right. Yep. Take them up to the counter and ask to have them fitted. $10? Sure, no worries. So out comes the dude, starts trying to pull the rubber off for some reason. So I point out, nah mate, it's a whole wiper arm replacement. The whole thing swaps over. Those two little Phillips heads right there, and you slide the arm off, new one on. Oh, I can't do that. Why not? Well, I don't have a Phillips head torque bit to get the right torque. Tight. That's it. There is no torque for it. Everything has a torque spec. One second. So I hobble around to my rear storage, open my drawers, pull out my factory service manual. There you go. Factory service manual. Every nut, belt, pulley, and wire. Torque specs would be in there if it's got any. So the dude goes through it, finds the part on wipers, and it says, ensure screws are done up tight. Sorry, man. No can do. Why not? Because I don't know the torque. Mate, that is the Toyota Genuine Factory Service Manual from 1983. If it says tight, then just go with tight. Obviously, Toyota doesn't have a torque for it because it doesn't need one. Every bolt has a torque spec. It has to. One second. I'll call Toyota. I happen to have a friend that worked at the local Toyota dealership, so I call through their service desk to the workshop. He comes on. Yeah, mate. I need the torque specs for the windscreen wiper mounting bolts for a 1983 HJ60. Um, tight. So there's no torque spec. Ah, uh, no. They're windscreen wipers. Not important enough to need a torque spec. If you don't know right, you shouldn't fit them. No worries. Well, I can't fit this gentleman's wipers then. I need a torque spec. 
No worries. I work for Toyota and I'm a qualified mechanic. I know more than you on this. OP, bring it around over my lunch break. Bye. And my mate hung up. He's got frick all tolerance for this crap. I just wanted him to clear things up. Anyway, so I grab my wallet, he grabs his screwdrivers, and we wander in. All done? Nope, need a refund. Your guy can't fit them. Something wrong? There's no available torque spec for the bolts. Huh? So now I'm going down to Toyota to have them fit my wipers. I'll need that refund. Okay then. So she processes the order, I go on my way. But seriously, I had the factory freaking workshop manual and this idiot persisted that he apparently knew more about the car than the manufacturer and a mechanic that works for the dealership. Idiot. 2. Changing the headlights on a Land Cruiser So the Land Cruiser had sealed beam headlights. For those of you born in the last three decades and owned only cars built in the last two decades, this is what I mean. Essentially, the globe and the housing are a whole unit. Anyway, headlight blows, so I again toddled down to the auto parts store. Different one this time. This time was more, I couldn't be arse doing it. I was just being lazy. Anyway, so I get the lights, pop up to the desk, confirm they can fit them. They can. All good. Anyway, we go out to the car, and the first thing he does is pop the bonnet. What's up? Gotta pop the bonnet to get the gloves. Nah, all the access is through the front grill. Really? Yeah, mate. What do the globes look like? Now, keep in mind, it's not half obvious these weren't just globes because the boxes are about 8 inches cubed. So I pull one out. Yeah, no, sorry about that. We can't fit whole headlights, mate. But you just said inside you can fit these. I thought they were just normal globes. So inside we go, I get a refund, go home, two screws, about half a beer, and they were done. Less effort than any modern car I've worked on where you have to pull the battery out, pull the plastic covers off the engine, and dismantle half the car. 3. My wife's taillight So my wife was on her way to work this morning when her Volkswagen told her she had a blown taillight. Now, my wife knows nothing about cars, and so I told her, just stop in at the store and they can swap it. It's been years since I have used them, so I thought, surely they couldn't screw up a standard modern car. Anyway, wife calls me back. They can't do it. Why not? They have to pull the taillight out. No crap, it's blown. No, the housing needs to come out. Yeah, one plastic screw, unscrew him, it pops out, three clips, pull the back cover off, and then change the globe. Takes five seconds. Yeah, they're saying they can't do it. Apparently, it's an insurance thing. Sure, get them to write that down that they're refusing to fix your car and come home. I'll freaking do it. They refused to write down about their refusal to do it, but my wife did get an audio recording with permission saying they couldn't do it. Wife comes home, five minutes later, it's all done. But seriously, simple, basic crap. They advertise this crap everywhere. We'll fit it for you. But even the most dog crap simple tasks, they can't seem to do at all. Either because it's stupidity, procedure, or bullcrap excuses that they can't actually do what they claim because of insurance. Honestly, I think they should stop advertising it at this point. It's simply a joke. You tell them, dude. I don't have much to say other than that, uh, that was ridiculous and at least they refunded his money. <laughs> I don't know. At least he saved money. Alright, so this story's called, I called corporate to complain about a Karen and hopefully save an employee. I was in a chain beauty store that has a hair salon in the back. I was looking at a display which happened to be right next to the salon, and I overheard the woman in the chair finishing up with the stylist. I was there for a few minutes, so I heard a decent portion of their conversation. A little while later, I got in line to pay and recognized the woman in front of me as the woman from the salon. There was only one cashier working and she was currently helping someone else. When they finished and the cashier called her over, the woman dropped her items on the counter and handed the cashier a coupon. 
I'm sorry, ma'am, but this coupon can't be applied to the items you're purchasing. What do you mean? There are some restrictions to what this coupon can be used towards. They're listed at the bottom of the coupon here. And she attempted to show her. That's absolutely ridiculous. I've used coupons on these items before. I buy them all the time. I'm sorry, ma'am. The previous coupons you used may have had different restrictions. However, this one specifically states that it cannot be used on these items. The coupon actually mentions this brand by name and the restrictions. Salon Lady then began screaming at the cashier about her horrible customer service and the fact that last month they wouldn't give her a free birthday gift even though she's been a rewards member for over 10 years just because she tried to redeem it two months after her birthday. She demanded the number for corporate and the cashier's name. The cashier started to write down the number. No, tell it to me right now. I'm gonna call them right now to make sure you aren't lying to me. She pulled out her phone and the cashier told her the number and her name. Salon lady proceeded to dial and stand at the register. Ma'am, if you could just step to the side so I can ring up the other customers. No, you will finish my transaction. I am gonna tell corporate how horribly you're treating me and they will command you to honor my coupon and give me my birthday gift. The cashier attempted to flag down another employee and drew even more screams from Salon Lady for attempting to leave. By this time, the manager had overheard the yelling and had come over. But Salon Lady refused to speak to her, refused to let the cashier open another register, and refused to move from where she was standing. She stood at the register, fake crying to the rep on the phone about how she came in to get a haircut and it turned out horribly. And the stylist refused to fix it and how her mother was dying in the hospital and she just wanted to see her one last time and now she looks awful and the employees in the store were treating her horribly and she couldn't believe how such a loyal customer was being mistreated and publicly humiliated all over a free birthday gift. The manager, having no other option, opened up another register to try and move through the massive line that had backed up and called me over. At the end of my transaction, I said, thank you. I would also like the number to corporate your name and that employee's name so I can tell them how calmly and politely you attempted to deal with this completely irrational woman. I was here for the whole thing, including when she told the stylist she liked her hair and her mother had been released from the hospital last week. Hopefully I can counteract whatever damage she may be doing. The manager thanked me and gave me the number and their names. I got in my car and called, telling the rep who answered the entire story and insisting that the cashier and manager did nothing wrong and that the woman was lying to get what she wanted. She thanked me and said she would make sure that my message got to where it needed to go. I sure hope it did. Edit, thank you for the awards and the kind words. Just a former customer service worker who knows what it's like to get attacked for no reason. Figured I'd use my power as a customer for good. And that's incredibly kind of you to do because dealing with customer service is one of the worst things in existence because I hate customer service. Holy crap. I hate being the customer and I hate being the servicer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.